going on guys? My name is Sebastian. This is Resale Junkie. If you're new here, my wife and I, we resell used clothing for a full-time living from home and we teach others how to do the same. Today, what we're going to talk about is one simple hack on how to pretty much have robots work for you and your eBay business and avoid doing spreadsheets. Guys, I'm going to blow your mind, so stay tuned. So what we're talking about today is Zapier.com. Pretty much what it is, is a connection service for program A to program B. And then those programs can talk to C, D, E, F, G. It's crazy what you can do. Literally, like, you can connect it to almost any program that's in their system and just make it communicate in some sort of way. Say I have a Google spreadsheet and I want to send an automated email to a certain client when they first sign up. I can do that with Zapier, with pre-filled information. It's, it's, it's mind-blowing. But what we're talking about today is for us eBay sellers in particular. Before we hired our virtual assistant Loretto, I still wanted to save some time because quite frankly guys, I hate doing spreadsheets and I hate doing accounting, I hate doing back end work. So that's what Zapier was actually able to do for me. It saved me a little bit of time. Now even though we don't use it anymore for our business currently, I still wanted to share this with all our eBay friends because I've never heard of another eBay reseller or any reseller talk about this. I'm not sure why I think it's maybe because they don't know about it. Um, but yeah, we're going to talk about it today and we're going to show you how to actually set this thing up right now. So let's get into the computer. Now guys, Zapier.com, self-explanatory, just sign up for an account. Uh, you get, with the free plan, you get a hundred free tasks and five free zaps. So a zap is when you tell eBay to talk to Google Sheets. A task is when eBay actually sends information to Google Sheets. So a task for us with eBay would be a sale. So this free plan will track a hundred free sales for uh, eBay, say. So especially if you're a small seller, if you're only doing hundred sales a month, you need to download Zapier right now. For us, we do hundred sales in a week, so we would need to pay for this. But again, for us, we have a virtual assistant, so it doesn't make sense for us to double dip in this. For you, it will though. I promise you it will. Even if you're not using this for eBay, I guarantee you there's almost something for anyone here that you could do something fun or tricky with. Uh, you could do some like hocus pocus magic Greek kind of witchcraft stuff on here. It, it, it's just fun guys. Like if you're techie and you're nerdy and you have a lot of things going on in your life, you can really have fun with Zapier. But back into eBay. So let's do this. They make it very, very simple to do this. Obviously you see this big bold button that says make a zap. We're gonna click on that. Now uh, it's gonna load up, create a zap. Okay, so the first thing that's gonna pop up is choose an event, choose a trigger. What, what is gonna trigger this thing to turn on and to send information? So we want to trigger this by eBay. Every time we get an eBay sale, we want to populate as much information as we can in our spreadsheet. So what we're gonna do here is just type in eBay. Now, boom, you select it. Now, Zapier is growing, not everything is on here. There's a lot of mainstream programs that are on here that can connect, but it's not, it's not that magical. Like you cannot pull every single piece of data from this on eBay. It's just, you have to be realistic about some things, but back into this. So the trigger event, uh, here it automatically populates new order because that is the only choice. Again, what I was just literally saying, there's not too many choices, but again, we don't need that many choices when it comes to this particular thing. So we're gonna have that trigger when there's a new order. We're gonna continue. Now it's gonna have you select your account. I have my account already set up in here, which you'll have to go through that process. It's super simple, you just connect it, it is not rocket science, and it's nothing I need to explain through here. Okay, so now it's gonna do this, it's gonna test the trigger. It's gonna see if that eBay account actually got connected to Zapier. So they pulled an order from our system. You can see this is clearly an order that just sold for $21. And all of this text looks crazy, but that's because that's the API that Zapier is pulling from eBay. So this is what the eBay backend looks like as far as like the text and the terminology and how eBay communicates with other systems. It's really kind of cool to see. It's kind of fun if, again, you're a techie nerd. But this is the information that's pulling. So. We're gonna go in here, we're gonna continue. This part's not that important yet. <clears throat> okay, we have our trigger. We know that every time there's a new order, we want it to do something. What do we want that to do? Do we want that to send me an email? Not really, because I already get a notification. It doesn't help. Do we wanna send someone else an email? That might help them. Maybe you have a partner, maybe you have a business partner, you wanna send them an email. Maybe you're an accountant, who knows? 
What we want to do in this case is we want to send it to Google Sheets because <clears throat> that's what we use to track our finances as far as this business is concerned. We like Google Sheets to track our sales just because it's free, it's a cloud-based thing, and it's just easy. I like the Google suite of software. If you guys are looking for a piece of software, sure, you can pay for all these things that track your credit cards and all that. That's great, but for the purpose of this and tracking onesie, twosie, eBay sales, it really does work perfectly. Okay, we chose our app. Now, the action event. There's several things you can do here now. Every time you get a sale, you can create a new worksheet. That doesn't make sense. You can update a spreadsheet row, which would make sense if you were selling uh, multiple of the same items. So you're just constantly replenishing the same thing. You can change the quantity that's sold, whatever. What we wanna do is every time there's a new sale on eBay, we wanna create a new spreadsheet row, okay? So we're gonna press continue. <clears throat> Now, again, it's gonna ask you for the second thing. It's gonna ask you to link your Google Sheets account. So again, mine is already linked. You'll have to go through the process. Again, super simple, just like linking your eBay account. I'm pretty sure there's other spreadsheets and Excel and all that on here, like Microsoft Excel. I'm sure you can connect it through there. You'll have to do the same exact thing through there. Okay, now we get to this page. It's gonna ask us to customize our spreadsheet row. This is when it gets important. This is when you guys really need to pay attention because you can just mess everything up from here. So when it asks for our drive, we're gonna pop in here. Now, you may have separate ones, you may have it broken down into whatever. Mine is just my Google Drive, okay? So select whatever your main Google storage drive is, which you will have one if you have a Google account and you use their suite of software. Now for a spreadsheet, again, you may have a million of these, you may have none, you may have to create a new spreadsheet to actually go forward right now. If you've never used Google Sheets, that will be step one. I will not be talking about that right now because if you can't create a new spreadsheet, well, God help you. So the spreadsheet 2020 is the one that we use. Now under that spreadsheet, we have a bunch of different worksheets. So the spreadsheet is the main group. The worksheets are the little guys under it. So like we'll have our, our money, our listing templates and some other little things under there. So what we wanna do is if that's the same case for you, we wanna go in here and actually select the worksheet that we wanna save this on. Now again, you can see there's a bunch of different months because we have it broken down by months. It's November right now. I clearly want it to save in November. So it pulls that spreadsheet, which is cool. Pulls all this data in there. It's doing the same thing that I did through eBay, but now it's pulling your data from that spreadsheet. And you can see all these numbers here, all these like little crazy things, right? See all these columns. What this is, is your Excel sheet, or your Google Sheets broken down into each little column and square and section by where you can input stuff. So this is where we kind of need to start paying attention, okay? So let's, let's get serious about this for a second. This is when it's gonna get a little bit confusing, so I need everyone to pay attention. You can see all these things are labeled um, like November, and then this number, this number, this number, this number. This is gonna get really confusing, but I'm gonna just make it super simple for you. We're gonna hop over to this spreadsheet, okay? Look at everything in this grow, in the green row. So you see November, you see 1431, 14942. What do you see here? November, 1431, 14942. Point is, it matches everything in this top row, even this stuff, the last month sold, all this good stuff. It matches all of that stuff. What this is doing, it's pulling all of the information from the top row of each individual column. So each individual thing right here corresponds to a column. So if I go up here and I go under November, this is column A. If I go under 1431, it is column B. And so on, 149 would be column C. And you just keep going down the line and that's what you have. So that is the only confusing part about this whole thing, guys. Now that we have that covered, what we're gonna get into is the fun stuff. Now, as you can see in the column November, column A is where my item title goes. So what I'm gonna do in here is I'm gonna go in here. Now I already had it selected because I ran through this once just because it's been a few months since I've done this. But what I'm gonna do down here is gonna go down here to line items title. Now there's two selections here. You can have one with just the item name, but then you can have one with the custom SKU as well, which is really cool. But there's a separate custom SKU 
which I think we can even have a little bit more fun with here in a second, and I'll show that to you guys here in a, here in a second. But what we're gonna do for the sake of this video is we're gonna uh, create this one. We're gonna select the line items title, and now my computer's freaking out, sorry. Okay, we're gonna select that just once. Okay, now next thing what I want is I wanna know what that item sold for. So column B would be 1431, and that's what the sell price is. Now, I need you guys to pay attention for one more second. Um, there's just a couple things to clarify here. Now, there's two sold item values, okay? We're gonna see this one that we're gonna come across first. Line items, total cost value, and then this one, right? It's 2520, 2520, it's the same thing. It's not what I'm talking about. We have this, but all the way down here, sorry, this is just a lot of numbers. You're gonna see this, payment summary converted from value. What this is, this number 2126 or 76 is everything after your fees, okay? After eBay fees. This 2520 is the raw fee with the um, uh, fees not taken out yet. Then down here, 2734 total fee basis amount value. That is with tax with everything that the buyer paid. Okay, guys. So that's very, very important to know which value you actually want here. Okay. So if you just want the fees taken out already, that's great. We have a separate eBay fee category here. So for us, it would be a little bit different. We'd wanna do some trickery, which we're gonna talk about here in a second with the custom label SKU. But it, it's one of those things where having the raw sale price for some people might be attractive and just taking out the fee in a separate transaction might be good. It, it just depends on how you wanna run your business. But for this video, again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the actual total, um, uh, total value here. We're going to take 2520 and we're going to use that. So after that, what we're going to do, this is when it kind of, kind of gets fun. Okay. So if you don't use the custom, uh, skew feature, what I recommend you do, this could be uh, kind of cool. If you go, let's say column F is my cost of goods. We have the 288.38 here. So we're going to find that. So 288.38 right there. We're going to go in here. And we're going to have eBay actually pull the custom SKU into this field. Now, for this, it won't exactly work because it's not just one number. Obviously, it has the bin B18 number and the PFR ENV, which is the abbreviation for our like, shipping label for our um, employee. But if I just had the raw 625 in here, what this would do is pretty cool, which you'll see in a second. Okay. Now... There's not really any other things yet that I can pull from this. Like I don't have a shipping cost. Uh, I mean, I could if I really wanted to go ahead and be crazy and put that in there. I could figure out how to do that. Um, unless the buyer paid, I could also have that. But my business runs on free shipping, so we don't have that. So we actually don't need any more information for this. So what we're going to do is actually run a test. So we're going to scroll down here past all of this stuff. And we're just going to press continue. Okay, it's gonna load up and it's gonna say the test was successful. Uh, this was actually an old test that I ran. So what we're gonna do is just press retest action. And okay, so now this row, I didn't do this guys, just to let's prove it one more time. Let's press retest action. And boom, you saw it live, look at that. So it inputted our item title, right? This is the most latest sale. This is the sale price that we selected. And then under the cost of goods, we see our custom SKU. Now what I was saying earlier is say your custom SKU just looked like that. And say you had your little net profit thing there. Boom, you just made it even better because you were able to take care of your cost of goods automated. Now again, for this, it doesn't work because my custom SKU is a little bit different than you guys, but again, we have an employee that does this anyway, so I don't use this. But for you guys, it could be really, really cool. I, I, I wish I would've knew about this last year. I wish I would've knew about this three years ago. It would've changed my life. Now, 
As you can see in our example, this has worked. We clearly have gotten to the right rows. Everything is lining up exactly where I want it. Now, what you could do is if you wanted to um, do like a quick little addition or subtraction as far as fees. So I have this eBay fee column. What I can do is actually create another column. Let me show you guys this real quick. We're gonna get nerdy just for one second. Okay, so what are we gonna do here? We're gonna go in here and we're just gonna choose this row just for the sake of purpose, this row J, there's nothing in it. So what we're gonna do is if there's nothing in it, it's just gonna show up with call, the little money sign, and then the actual value of the column. So the value of column J would be J. That's what we look for. And we're gonna go in here, and we're gonna go back into this. Remember I told you guys there are several money value options you could choose. We originally chose this one, the 2520. What we're gonna do now is what we're gonna do. So real quick. This is the eBay collect and remit taxes. This is not what we're looking for. For some reason yet, eBay doesn't have just the raw fee value under this. I think it's because they just transferred over to manage payments uh, more so full time. So I think that's why I'm assuming shortly they will have just a raw fee pop up in here. Okay, but we have this. We have this 2176 that we never originally used. We're gonna select that. Okay, so. Now, we're gonna go continue again. We're gonna run the same exact thing. Now, it's already been tested. Now, okay, wait, I didn't run a test, sorry, okay. Now it's been tested. Okay, so as you can see, now we have the same exact thing, and now this pops up with a 2176, but that still doesn't help us. I guess I just want to preface this with saying that I hate doing math and I hate Excel sheets, but even I can figure this out. Okay, so just pay attention for one second. We're going to take this sell price of 2520 and we're going to subtract it from this 2176 in column J. And we're going to have it end up in this eBay fee column um, in C. How we're going to do that is we're going to select this column. We're going to type in uh, equals sum parentheses. Now we're going to go over here. We're going to select this and it's going to input it there. We're going to press minus and then we're going to go over here, select the 2176 and it's going to put column J there. We're going to close the parentheses and we're going to press enter. Now we have 344, which is the eBay fee for this transaction. All we do is simply drag this down. Now let's say we keep selling this hoodie. Look at that. Boom. It's done. There's no more math needing to be done the fees are calculated for you and you are good to go and your life has just been changed. This is how you grow your business, guys.